We always called each other good fellas. You're gonna like this guy, he's all right. He's a good fella, he's one of us. Written by Nicholas Pileggi and Martin Scorsese, this film is ranked number 41 on the WGA's list of the 101 greatest screenplays. It's also the 17th highest rated film of all time on IMDb. Here are six screenwriting secrets in Goodfellas. Always dream the boy I love would come along. If you want the characters in your story to be complex and pop off the page, look to the screenwriting in Goodfellas as a great example. Let's take a look at all the different facets of character development in this film. First, let's see the way characters are introduced. We meet Henry by seeing his biggest desire. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. But to me, heart, being a gangster be was better than being president of the United States. Even before I first wandered into the cab stand for an after-school job, I knew I wanted to be a part of them. Although Tommy is introduced briefly early on, this is the first scene we spend any actual time with him. He says, no, you're going to tell me something today, tough guy. I said, all right, I'll tell you something. Go fuck your mother. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean I'm funny? <laughs> it's, it's a good story. It's funny. You're a funny guy. I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown. I amuse you. I make you laugh. I'm here to fucking amuse you. In Jimmy's introduction, we see what he loves more than anything. I mean, the bartender got a hundred just for keeping the ice cubes cold. Yeah, I was just gonna say that all your guineas money. <laughs> when it comes to Polly, we immediately know that he commands respect. <laughs> Hello, Polly. Oh. Hey, Polly. Polly might have moved slow, but it was only because Polly didn't have to move for anybody. Next, we have the characters fears. Henry reveals in his narration what he's most afraid of. To me, it meant being somebody in a neighborhood that was full of nobodies. To us, those goody-good people who worked shitty jobs for bum paychecks and who took the subway to work every day, worried about their bills, were dead. I mean, everybody else in the joint was doing real time, all mixed together, living like pigs. I'm an average nobody. I get to live the rest of my life like a schnook. Paulie reveals his biggest fear to Henry. Gribs is 70 years old and a fucking guy's gonna die in prison. Need that. Ain't gonna happen to me. You understand? Next, let's talk about the main character's fatal flaw. In this case, it's the lie that Henry tells himself. Nobody goes to jail unless they want to. I know what I'm doing. I got things organized with these guys. I got a guy in here from Pittsburgh who's gonna help me move it. Believe me, in a month we're gonna be fine. We won't need anybody. We'll be all right. I got things lined up. Pittsburgh? You have to go see your parole officer tomorrow. Karen, don't worry about it. Everything's gonna be fine. And finally, let's take a look at character orchestration. The characters in Goodfellas are different and easily distinguishable from each other. Henry is quiet and soft-spoken. Henry, what's the matter? You don't talk too much. You don't eat much, you don't talk much. <laughs> uh, I'm just listening. Jimmy is disciplined and paranoid. Never ran on your friends and always keep your mouth shut. What? Did you hear what I said? Don't buy anything, don't get anything, nothing big. Did you hear what I said? What's the matter with you? I've been telling you your whole life. Don't talk on the fucking phone, right? Now you understand? Tommy is the jokester. <laughs> <laughs> he flies off the handle. Come on, don't be like that. What do you Tommy, mean don't be on. like that? <laughs> and he's racist. I can't believe this prejudice against a Jew broad. Prejudice against Italians. Frankie always mumbles in Italian. Frankie Carbone. Hey, what's up? What's up? And he's always a bit clueless. Come on, make that coffee to go. Let's go. Hey, so come on, What the fuck are you doing? It's a joke, a joke. Put the fucking pot down. You gotta take the coffee. And finally, there's Maury. Hey, guys, I've been looking all over for you. Jimmy, Henry, how are you? Merry Christmas. Hey, listen, I need the money. Maury, you're gonna get your money. You just gotta stop busting balls. I swear to God, I'm on a pool busting like you my whole life. <laughs> hey, who loves you more than I do, huh? So the lesson here. Characters make the story. Put in the work in developing them. The, sea. the story world in Goodfellas is one that is outside of the reality of most audience members. Yes, it's based on a true story, but it's still a movie, and the audience needs to understand the rules of the game when it comes to the world of the Mafia. 
There's a clear establishment of characters valuing material possessions. Hi, Mom, what do you think? Look at my shoes, aren't they great? My God, you look like a gangster. Age, but I got my mom to watch the babies tomorrow night. I can't do it, Karen. But I got something lined up. Yeah, but tomorrow night's the only night she can do it. Oh, Maurice Valencia. Looks like Roma. This is all so. This is from Siam. And this we just had to have made special. Go ahead, sit in it, Belle. The others, you couldn't even sit in them. This is gorgeous. I bought it for my wife. It's a coupe. I love that car. I mean, everybody's flashing their stuff here. Evidently, they got their money. They're good. I'm wearing the same old shit. They're wearing it. And we get the important rules of the game. Hundreds of guys depended on Paulie, and he got a piece of everything they made. It was tribute, just like in the old country, except they were doing it here in America. They'd come in with their subpoenas and warrants and make me sign. But mostly they were just looking for a handout, a few bucks to keep things quiet, no matter what they found. Murder was the only way that everybody stayed in line. You got out of line, you got whacked. Everybody knew the rules. Jimmy and I could never be made because we had Irish blood. You've got to be 100% Italian so they can trace all your relatives back to the old country. It's the highest honor they can give you. It means you belong to a family and a crew. It also means you could fuck around with anybody just as long as they aren't also a member. So when you have a unique story world, be sure that you establish the rules of the game for the audience. I've talked about it many times before, but that's simply because it occurs a lot in professional screenwriting. A quick recap. Dramatic irony occurs when the audience knows something that certain characters do not. This can be used to create one of two effects. The first effect is the suspense that's created when the audience wants to know what will happen when characters find out the truth. For example, we know that Henry was involved with killing Billy Betts. So we immediately feel suspense when this happens. Uh, he came into the joint that one night, and then he just disappeared. That was it. All right, keep your eyes open, because they're busting my balls about this bastard, all right? Knowing that Polly, discovering the truth, would put Henry's life at stake. Another example of using dramatic irony for suspense. And you see anybody fucking around with this shit you're going to tell me, right? Yeah. That means anybody. So when Henry gets involved with cocaine, we immediately anticipate the confrontation of Polly finding out. Here's an example with Jimmy. First, we see the trouble that Johnny Roast Beef and Frankie Carbone get into. Then we get this. Don't do what Frankie and Johnny did. Don't be a moron with the money. Do what's right, you understand? Yeah, of course. So of course comes the dramatic irony. Aaron! Judy! Roast! Come here! I got the most expensive tree they had! Goodfellas also uses dramatic irony for comedic purposes. For example, although Karen doesn't know it yet, we know full well that Henry is a mobster. What do you do? What? What do you do? Construction. The audience knows what happened to Billy Betts. Because of this, we get several doses of dramatic irony for comedy. Anyway, you know what reminds me? I need this knife. I'm gonna take this. It's okay. Okay, yeah. I just need it for Bring a while. it back, though. You know. The hoof got caught in the grill. Oh. I gotta, I gotta hack it off. Ooh. That guy's got a nice head of white hair. Look how beautiful with the dog. It looks the same. They, they... Looks like somebody we know. We also get dramatic irony when one character says something that another doesn't hear. The comedic effect occurs when a character says the same thing we just heard. I felt he used too many onions, but it was still a very good sauce. Vinny, don't yeah. put too many onions in the sauce. Yeah. Listen, tell Michael not to let the sauce stick, but keep stirring it. Henry says don't let the sauce stick. I'm stirring it. Dramatic irony is a simple but effective tool. Put it in your writing toolbox and watch your stories improve. One of the biggest problems with voiceover narration is that the narrator tells us exactly what we can see on the screen for ourselves. In Goodfellas, Henry Hill provides deeper insights that we can't see on the screen, especially when it comes to other characters. If there was a union problem or, say, a beef in the numbers, then only the top guys can meet with Pauly to discuss the problem. Hundreds of guys depended on Pauly, and he got a piece of everything they made. It was tribute, just like in the old country, except they were doing it here in America. If any of the truckers or airlines gave us any trouble, Pauly had his union people scare them with a strike. It was beautiful. See, Jimmy was one of the most feared guys in the city. 
Now, he was first locked up at 11, and he was doing hits for mob bosses when he was 16. Jimmy was the kind of guy who rooted for the bad guys in the movies. Now, he was one of the city's yeah. biggest hijackers, a booze, cigarettes, shrimp and lobsters. Shrimp and lobsters were best. They went really fast. We also get a brilliant counterpoint from a second narrator. Karen provides further insight on how she gets sucked into Henry's world. I didn't think there was anything strange in any of this. You know, a 21-year-old kid with such connections. He was an exciting guy. Everybody wanted to be nice to him. And he knew how to handle it. I know there are women like my best friends who would have gotten out of there the minute their boyfriend gave them a gun to hide. But I didn't. I gotta admit the truth. It turned me on. After a while, it got to be all normal. None of it seemed like crimes. It was more like Henry was enterprising and that he and the guys were making a few bucks hustling. The truth was that no matter how bad I felt, I was still very attracted to him. So when it comes to voiceover narration, make sure to provide insight that the audience can't see for themselves. The characters in Goodfellas, Rob, commit arson, cheat on their wives, and kill. So why are these mobsters so fascinating to watch? In the end, they're still human beings, and there's a lot about them that is universally relatable. For example, don't we all love food? This stuff is great, but it's like lead. So tell me, tell me, where have you been? Anyway. Delicious. Delicious. Thank you. Veal. Beef and pork. Ah, good, but you gotta have the pork. Oh, pork that's, the that's, that's the flavor. Vinny, I got your peppers and onions. Salami, prosciutto, a lot of cheese. Come on, come on, what else? Some red wine. Okay. Now we can eat. I got some white, too. Give me the white, too. Beautiful. Okay, boys, let's eat. Oh, oh, good. Very good. Did we eat this good in the joint? I had to start braising the beef, pork butt, and veal shanks for the tomato sauce. And I was making ziti with the meat gravy, and I'm planning to roast some peppers over the flames. And I had some beautiful cutlets that were cut just right that I was going to fry up before dinner just as an appetizer. Perhaps the biggest aspect of humanity portrayed in mafia films is their love for family. And my mother was happy after she found out that the Ciceroles came from the same part of Sicily as she did. That was the answer to all her prayers. And they named all their daughters Marie. This is Marie. Hi. And this is Pete? No, I mean Paulie. I get confused myself. We always did everything together, and we always were in the same crowd. Anniversaries, christenings. You have to do the right thing. You have to go home to the family, you understand? You gotta go home, okay? Please, there's no other way. You're not gonna get a divorce. We're not on your mile. Who wants to go to Uncle Paulie's? Me! Huh? Hungry? Let me look at you, let me look lovely. What do you think? I look good. You look wonderful. Listen, yeah. just be careful. Congratulations, I wish you lots of luck. I love you. So when it comes to the characters in your screenplay, don't forget about their humanity. The plot of Goodfellas is constantly driven by the consequences of the characters' actions. Let's see several examples of how these consequences create their own sequences and mini-stories. Henry works at the cab stand full-time. This causes Henry's father to beat him for skipping school, which in turn causes Tutty to threaten the mailman. Another example, Henry sells stolen cigarettes. This causes him to get arrested. However, this makes the mobsters take him in as one of their own. Tommy abuses Sonny and trashes his bar. This causes Sonny to ask for help from Polly by becoming his business partner. The final consequence, Polly runs the bamboo lounge into the ground. Later, Henry fools around with Janice. This causes Karen to confront Janice herself. And then we get the confrontation between Karen and Henry. And the final consequence with Polly and Jimmy. Karen came to the house. This is no good. You gotta straighten this thing out. I gotta go home, okay? Look at me. You gotta go home. Smarten up. Henry and Jimmy beat up a guy in Florida. Here are the consequences. Then I found out that the guy we roughed up turned out to have a sister working as a typist for the FBI. She gave up everybody, Jimmy, me, even her brother. The judge gave Jimmy and me 10 years like he was giving away candy. 10 years in a federal penitentiary. And finally, the group scores big with the Lufthansa heist. In spite of Jimmy's warnings to avoid attention, 
This causes several guys to buy extravagant items, which ultimately leads to the gravest consequence of all. So don't forget, don't let the actions in your story occur within a bubble. Be mindful of the consequences that they create. So what other films would you like to see me cover for screenwriting? Let me know in the comments below. A sincere thank you to my wonderful patrons for supporting me on Patreon. Also, be sure to subscribe and tap the bell to be notified of upcoming videos. More great content is on the way. Thank you so much for watching.